How's it going everyone? Pop-Tart here. Welcome back to the Air Team channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the Airbus A220-300 in 1.5 to 1 scale. Formerly the Bombardier CS300 before the program was acquired by Airbus, the A220 is a mid-range airliner mostly used throughout Europe by operators such as Air Baltic and Swiss Airlines. Though Delta does have quite a substantial order for the A220-300 and already operates a fairly large fleet of the shorter A220-100 series. As for the build itself, as I mentioned, this is in 1.5 to 1 scale, meaning that every 1 meter in real life is equivalent to 1.5 blocks exactly. If you are building an airport project in this scale, this will be perfectly to scale with all of our other 1.5 to 1 scale aircraft on the channel. Now if you'd like a more in-depth look around the aircraft before we get started, check out the original showcase video that was put together for this aircraft by Mind. There should be a card up on screen for that now, or a link to it in the video description, so please do give that a watch. Anyways, before we get started with the build, one more thing to mention. As always, this build does make use of our very own custom Aeroteam texture pack. A download link to this pack for Minecraft 1.13 can be found in the description below if you don't have it already. But if you're stuck using the default pack for whatever reason, I will do my best to show you workarounds you can use for the default pack. For the most part, this build should still work just fine in default, but I highly recommend using the Air Team pack instead, as it'll look much better. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get going on this tutorial. So first things first, here's some dimensions for you to help you figure out where you want to put this. This aircraft is 58 blocks long, 55 blocks across, and 18 blocks tall. So just keep that in mind as you're getting started. Now as for materials, here in the Air Team pack we're using the wool material, coupled with the purple stars and slabs for the smooth and shiny wool coloration for the aircraft. In default you'll probably want to use something like smooth quartz instead, so just use that instead of wool whenever I'm building. For the purposes of this tutorial I'll be referring to these as the wool stairs and slabs, but again that's the purple stairs and slabs in the Air Team pack. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get going on layer 1. Alright, so for layer 1, if you are building this on the ground, as I am here, in order for the landing gear to connect up with the ground nicely, you'll want to be starting with a two block gap off the ground, starting on the third block, like so. If you're building this in the air though, you obviously don't have to worry about that, and you can start wherever you like. So with that, let's get building. We'll be starting with two wool top slabs right there, off of the third block. Again, that's a two block gap off the ground if you are building this on the ground here. And we can get rid of our temporary blocks. After this here, we're going to be putting in the nose gear door. So for this, what you're going to do is grab your quartz slabs, and we have two quartz top slabs going back from this. Now if you are building this, uh, the entire fuselage out of quartz here, you'll probably want to use something like uh, cobblestone to accent uh, the doors and gear doors and all that from the aircraft itself. But since we do have the option to use quartz instead here in the air team pack as we are building the aircraft out of wool, this is a much more subtle and realistic option for uh, accent details on the aircraft. So we have our two wool top slabs there and two quartz top slabs going back. After this here we're going to have seven wool top slabs going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Next grab your quartz. We have a quartz upside down stair facing backwards for an airfoil extension on the underside of the aircraft right here. Then three wool top slabs going back from that. After this here, we have an upside down wall stair facing forwards, like this, with an upside down stair off to either side, like so. Back from this here, we have a block of wool in the center, with a sea lantern out to either side for the landing lights embedded in the uh, wing box right there. Out to either side of these sea lanterns to close it off, we have a wall stair facing towards the front, like so. After this here, we're going to place a block of wool in the center, with an upside down stair facing backwards off to either side, and then round this upside down stair off with an upside down stair facing out to the side just like this. Don't worry about it connecting off with that uh, one in the center there, that's going to be fixed later as we continue building along. Anyways, after this here, we're going to place a row of four wool blocks going back, one, two, three, and four, and box this off to either side, like so. Next, take your brick slabs. We're going to have a brick top slab right there, underneath the fourth block back in the center right there. This is for the beacon light on the underside of the fuselage. Going back from this here, we're going to have another row of three wool. One, two, and three. And box this off again, like so. Underneath this here, we're going to have an acacia button on the outermost blocks right here, just like this. This is for a little detail on the underbelly of the fuselage. I'm not entirely sure what it is, I think it's a vent of some sort, but yeah, it's here and we're replicating it, so that's what that's for. Anyways, we're just trying to box off the rest of the wing box now. So we've got seven upside down wall stairs facing out to the side right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That'll straighten out that corner stair nicely there to get the uh, shaping of the wing box all the way in. 
Same thing on the other side here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, like so. Next, coming back from this here, we've got a black wool right here, out to either side, with a block of wool in the center right there, just like this. Underneath each black wool here, we have a stone button facing uh, on the uh, bottom side right here, just like this. This is for the exposed rims of the wheels folded up underneath the fuselage there for when the landing gear are retracted. On smaller narrow bodies like this, the gear doors don't cover up the uh, landing gear completely when they're retracted, so you do see the landing gear uh, in the underbelly of the aircraft like this when they are retracted. So that's what that's for. So once we have the wheels in place, we're just going to drop a quartz upside down stair out to the side, just like this, for the gear doors. Then back from this here, we just got a row of three of wool going across, then an upside down wool stair out to the side like this. One and two more rows of three going across like this, with a wool top slab out to either side this time. Then a single block of wool there in the center. Two top slabs going out to the side just like this, so you still have a row of five going across. After this here, we're going to have a row of five top slabs going across the back now to cap that off. Then three in the center right there going across. Going back from this now, we've got six wool top slabs just from the center block. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then with your quartz stairs, we have a quartz upside down stair right there for an airflow extension in the underside, and a wool top slab going back from it. And once you have that, that is everything for layer one. Alright, so for layer two here, we're going to be starting right up at the front at this very first top slab that we placed in the tutorial. On top of this here, we've got a wool full block with a second block going forwards, and an upside down wool stair facing forwards just like this. Now to either side of this first wool block right there, upside down wool stair facing forwards, and a wool top slab on its face, just like this. Going back from this now, on the right side only, we're going to be placing eight blocks going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, like this. Now we have the forward cargo door to put in, so this is only going in on the right side here again. For this, we're going to have two uh, blocks of quartz going back, with a stone button up to the side of that second block back, just like this. That'll start off our forward cargo door here. Then six blocks going back from this. One, two, three, four, five, and six, like so. On the left side here, that's just going to leave us with 16 blocks going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen, like so. That should line up perfectly. Now, before we continue with fleshing out the wing box here, we're actually going to put in some details up at the nose of the aircraft here. So, the first thing we're going to be doing is dropping a tripwire hook out to either side of this upside down stair here. So what we're going to be doing for this is dropping a temporary block out to the side with a tripwire hook on its face. Grab a stick, and or any old item, and type slash REPL0 to switch this over to the replace tool. Select that tripwire hook by left clicking and paste it over that temporary block by right clicking. And that'll trick that uh, tripwire hook there into staying on that uh, upside on stair without it uh, breaking or falling off. Because quite obviously you can't place a tripwire hook on a non-solid block in vanilla like this. So again, temporary block out to the side, tripwire hook, select that and paste over, like so. These tripwire hooks here are for the pitot tubes on the side of the nose right here, in case you're wondering what those are for. Now if you don't have access to world edit and can't put that in, uh, you can just leave that out I suppose if you want, but uh, if you do have access to world edit then I highly recommend putting these in. It does add to the realism quite a bit. Anyways, once you've got that put in, just on this uh, first wool block right here, one back from these tripwire hooks, drop a button out to either side, like so. This is for another detail on the nose. And that is everything for the nose here. So let's continue on with the wing box. Going back here, where we have this very last wool block that we placed in that long row here, we've got a wool stair facing forwards out to either side like this, then 15 blocks going back from each of these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Like so. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Just like this. Next up here, we've got a wool stair facing backwards from both of these rows right here. Now, starting from the inside of that stair to close off this gap, on the right side only, we have four blots going back. 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then it's just the same thing as we did up at the front there, this time for the aft cargo door. We've got two quartz blocks going back, and a stone button out to the right side of that uh, second block back right there. Then another set of four wool going back. One, two, three, and four. On the left side here, starting from the inside of that wool stair to close off the gap, that'll leave us with ten blocks going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That should line up perfectly with the row on the other side right here. 
Next, overlapping two blots to close off this gap, we'll be placing three blots going back, one, two, and three, just like this. Back from each of these blots of wolf right here, we have an upside down wolf stair facing backwards, and then back from each of these two wolf top slabs going back, one and two, one and two, and one and two. And that will finish off layer two. Alright, so for layer three here, what we're going to be doing is right on top of this upside down wolf stair from the previous layer, we now have a wool stair facing forwards, like this, to start rounding back the nose. Back from this here, we'll be placing a block going back from it right here, with a wool stair out to either side facing forwards, like this. Three blocks back from each of these right here, with a tripwire hook on the first block right there to complete our pedo tubes. Top slab out to either side of that third block, just like this. Then on the right side only, again we've got a bit of asymmetry for the cargo door. Six blocks going back. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That should line up right there. Then two blocks of quartz going back from it, just like that, to finish off the forward cargo door. Back from this here, we have five blocks going back this time. One, two, three, four, and five. And on the left side here, that'll leave us with th uh, 13 blocks to close this off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. That should line up like so. Now out to either side of this last block right here, we'll be taking a torch, and we have a torch out to either side, just like this. This is for the wind light in the side of the fuselage right here. It's worth mentioning that in the Aero Team pack, the torch is a custom lamp model like this, uh, specifically for use in special lights such as this. If you don't look, uh, like the look of the default torch, which you probably won't because it looks a bit weird, what you can probably use instead is a wool stair facing out to the side like this or a block of wool with a button out to the side. Uh, upside down stair, or normal stair rather, would probably look better, but uh, yeah, the torch solution here in the Air Team pack is a much more preferable alternative to that. Anyways, that's just a few ideas you can use if you are in default without that. So once we have that, going back on the right side now, we have 20 more blocks back from that wing light. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Just like this. Next, grab your quartz. We have two quartz full blocks going back to finish off the aft cargo door. And then two more blocks of wool just like this. On the left side, that'll leave us with 24 blocks going back from the wing light right there to line up with the last wool block. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Just like this. Back from each of these now, we have an upside down wool stair facing backwards, and then two wool top slabs back from each of these, just like this. Starting from the inside of that wool stair right there, we've got seven blocks going back to close off this gap. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Out to either side of this very last block right here, we have a stone button out to the side just like this. Now overlapping one block right here in the center to close off this gap on the underside, we have uh, just two blocks going back, like so. Then back from each of these three wool blocks right here, upside down wool stair facing backwards, and two wool top slabs back from each of these just like that. And that will finish off layer three of the A220. Alright, so for layer 4, what we're going to be first doing here is dropping a wool half slab on top of that uh, block of wool right there in the center of the nose. Back from this here, we have a nether brick top slab going back. This is going to be the start of our cockpit glass right here. So it's worth mentioning that uh, for the A220, the cockpit glass actually falls between uh, slab layers like this. So the cockpit glass will comprise of a top slab layer and a half slab layer on top. This is just due to how its dimensions work out in real life, and to stay true to its shaping, this is how we're replicating it here. So we won't be able to use black glass for this cockpit glass, as it is uh, slab layer material. So we'll just be using nether brick for this. Anyways, that nether brick half slab on top will be for the next layer, so we won't be worrying about that for now. Out to either side of that nether brick top slab right there, we have a wool top slab, just like this. Next, we somehow have to get a nether brick top slab and a wool uh, full block underneath right here. So this is where things get a bit tricky without the Aero Team pack. So with the Aero Team pack, you're going to be using a stripped oat log for this solution right here. So this is a half black wool, half uh, white wool texture like this, which is perfect for offset cockpit windows such as this. So uh, if you don't have access to the Aero Team pack, you might have to use something like a netherbrick top slab out to the side with a block of wool in the center to close that off. But uh, what's kind of weird from the side, of course, because you've now got this massive indent in the side of the nose, 
and it also impedes on the quality of our interior, which we don't want, really. So this is a much preferable alternative to that. I suppose you could also just use a netherbrick full block like this, or, or black wool, rather. But uh, yeah, this is what we're using here in the Aero Team pack. Again, that's the stripped oak log out to either side right there. And diagonally from this, we just have a third stripped oak log right there for the third block out of the cockpit windows. So, once we have that, uh, I can throw that away for now, as we won't be needing it again. Going back from this here, we have two blocks of wool going back, one and two, just like this. Now to grab your quartz, we have a quartz upside down stair up to either side right here, facing towards the center. This is for the start of our forward entry door right here, the L1 and R1 doors right here. Back from both of these now, we've got 14 blocks going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Grab your quartz again, and again we have a quartz upside down stair facing towards the center, just like this. This time around, that's for the overwing exit there. So, 21 more blocks going back from this here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21, right there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Like so. Next we have a quartz full block going back this time for the aft doors. And then two more blocks going back right here with your wool. 1 and 2. 1 and 2. We'll top slab back from that there with uh, two blocks of wool going back right there. Starting in from the center there to close off that gap. Next we have a wool stair facing out to the side right here. This is for the start of our stabilizer trim in the side of the uh, tail cone. So, same thing on the other side right here, facing out to the side. Then four blocks going back right here. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Block of wool right there in the center to close that off with a... Oh, that's a stair. Block of wool, rather, with a second block going back right there. Top slab out to either side. Next we've got an upside down wool stair facing backwards right there. And then two more wool top slabs going back from it. Just like that, and that will finish off layer 4. Alright, so for layer 5 here, what we're going to be doing is just finishing off the cockpit glass. As I mentioned, it's a half slab layer right here, so we'll just be dropping a nether brick half slab on top of each of these bots right there. That will finish off the cockpit glass. So next, in from this, uh, coming back from that very first nether brick slab right there, we have a block of wool right there. Then out to either side, two blocks of wool going back, like this with a wool stair facing forwards out to either side of that second block. Next we've got a block of wool going back from both of those right there. Grab your quartz and we have an upside down quartz stair facing backwards right there for the windows and the forward doors. Next we've got two blocks of wool going back right here. One and two. One and two. And now we'll be starting to put in our windows in this layer. So for this here, our very first set of windows is actually upside down stairs facing forwards. So what we're going to be doing here is leaving a space of 12 blocks going back from this here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. On the 13th block right here, you'll see this lines up perfectly with our upside down court stair there from the previous layer for the overwing exits. So in this its place right here, we're going to be having an upside down stair facing backwards with your quartz for the windows in the uh, overwing exit right there. Same thing on the other side. So now going forwards from this here, we have 12 upside down wool stairs now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Just like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Sorry if that was a bit confusing at all, but working our way from the back to the front for that upside down uh, stair layer does make things a lot easier for ourselves. So we don't have to be placing each and every single one like this going all the way back. Anyways, now that we have that in place, what we're going to be doing is next placing a block of wool back from each of these quartz stairs right there for the overwing exits. Next we have an upside down uh, wool stair facing forwards right here. Oh, there we go. Just like this. Next we'll be switching sides, so we'll be going backwards with our upside down wool stairs now. This is for a uh, space between windows right there as we go back. So, back from this here, we have 18 upside down wool stairs going back from that uh, wool stair right there. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, 17, and 18 right there. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Like so. Back from the here, we've got a block of wool right there. That should line up with our aft doors right here. For this, upside down port, stair facing backwards for the windows, just as we did up at the front. Next, we have three blocks going back. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Like so. Come in now, starting on top of this block right here. We'll just be placing a single block right there. With a wool stair facing out to the side for the upper portion of the stabilizer trim. Going back from this now, we have one and two upside down wool stairs facing out to the side. With a third facing forwards to corner off right there. Again, that's one and two. And a third facing backwards, or forwards rather, like this. Two blocks of wool back from both of those stairs right there. Come in towards the center now, and we have two blocks going back. With a cobblestone stair right there facing backwards for the APU of the A220. Next, grab your stone buttons, and to finish off this layer, uh, to either side of that second wool block back of those two right there, we have a single stone button out to the side. Just like that. And that will finish off layer 5. Alright, so for layer 6 here, what we're going to be doing is coming right up to the front here. Grab your quartz slabs. We have a quartz half slab right here, going back from that uh, wool top slab or wool block that we placed in the last layer right there. Just like this. Next, with your wool slabs, we have a row of three going across the front right there. Block of wool back from the center block with a wool half slab just like this. Next, going back from that uh, wool full block right there in the center, we have 44 wool top slabs going back. This is for the uh, curvature of the interior here. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, and 44. Just like that. That's going back right here, out to either side. That'll leave us with 38 blots going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, and 38. Like so. Same thing on the other side here. 38 blocks going back from that wool slab right there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, and 38. Like so. That should line up with your aft doors right there. Let's come all the way back to the front, out to either side of that very first wall block right there. We have a quartz slab out to the side to finish off our forward doors. Now going back from this, we have 36 wall half slabs going back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I fell. Okay. That's six, yes. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, and thirty six. Like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, and thirty six. With a quartz half slab going back from that to finish off the aft doors this time. Now before we continue along here with the uh, finishing off the rear of the aircraft right here, we're going to be first putting in some details on the top of the fuselage right here. First thing we're going to be doing is grabbing our stone buttons on the second block back right here of these uh, wool blocks in the center layer. Uh, third block back rather, saving a gap of two. So one and two, and on the third block right there, not the second to size set, but leaving a gap of two. Right there, we have a uh, stone button right there. Let's leave a gap of one this time, and a second stone button, like so. Gap of six going back. I can use my temporary blocks just for fun. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Let's grab a lever. On top of this block right here, we have a lever. Make sure it's flipped facing backwards like this. Let's leave a gap of five going back from this. One, two, three, four, and five. Grab a uh, brick slab right here. We have a brick half slab going back from that fifth block right there. Just like this. That's for the beacon light on the top of the aircraft. Now, after this here, what we're going to be doing is leaving a gap of eight blocks. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we have a lever. Again, make sure that's flipped facing backwards. It's for an airflow extension on the top of the aircraft. 
Next drawing back right here, we've got a gap of uh, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. With a lever right there flipped facing backwards. Next here, we're going to be putting in the optional SATCOM antenna. Now this is quite an interesting thing. Uh, so the SATCOM antenna is a very prominent feature on the shorter E220-100 model. And uh, you actually see it installed quite a lot. Now, uh, with painting all of our liveries and everything for the recent A220 showcase, I have yet to stumble across a single SATCOM antenna on an A220-300. We put it in here at our best of guess. Uh, this, it's not using a real reference. Uh, I don't know if it even is an option on the A220-300, but uh, it's here as a thing. So what we're going to be doing for this is grabbing a birch trapdoor or again an iron trapdoor in default. And back from this uh, lever right here, we're gonna have a birch trapdoor right there. Two wool half slabs going forwards from it, birch trapdoor going forwards from it, and then two birch trapdoors out to either side of that uh, slab layer right there. And with that, you'll have your optional SATCOM antenna. Now again though, I have yet to see it installed on a real aircraft, so for realism purposes, if you are uh, building this for a specific delivery or something, You'll probably want to cross-check with images of the actual aircraft that you're building to see if that operator has the SATCOM antenna installed or not, because chances are it probably won't. So if that's the case, you'll just uh, be not building that and leaving that space blank. But it's there if you want it, so yeah, that's how we'll be building it here. So with that whole mess out of the way, uh, next thing we're going to be doing here is finishing off the aft of the aircraft. So, I am not sure where I got the number 44 from in my notes here for these wool top slabs going back. Uh, this should stop right here with the aft doors, but yeah, so that's a slight mistake on my part. My apologies for that. But yeah, so that should leave you with 38 wool top slabs going back. You, you don't have to bother with recounting it, just bring it back in line with the aft doors right here. So anyways, once we have that there, what we're going to be doing is grabbing our wool blocks, and we have 9 blocks of wool going back from that top slab right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, like so. Now out to either side here, we've got six blots going back. One, two, three, four, five, and six, like so. One, two, three, four, five, and six. With two wool top slabs going back right there, or half slabs rather, from that quartz half slab right there. Now we'll finish off that outermost layer. Next, going back from this uh, second layer out right here with your wool, we have a wool stair facing backwards. And two wool half slabs going back, like this. Just like that. And then to finish off the after right here, just four wool uh, half slabs going back. One, two, three, and four. That should stop right there on top of your cobblestone stair for the APU. And that will finish off layer six. So with that, the fuselage of the A220-300 is done. So with the fuselage done now, the next thing we're going to be doing is putting in the vertical stabilizer. So for this, what we're going to be doing is just coming to this very last block of wool right there in the center layer. On top of this here, we've got two blocks of wool going up. One and two. Wool top slab going back from this here. Three blocks up from it. One, two, and three. Another wool top slab back from that right there. Then two blocks going up. One and two. Come out at an angle this time going back, and we have two blocks going up. Next, grab your slabs. We have starting on top right here of that uh, two blocks right there. One, two, and three blots of your uh, wool half slabs going forwards, just like this. That'll finish off the rear edge of your vertical stabilizer. Now going forwards from that uh, second wool block up right there, we have one, two, and three blots of wool right there, sticking out one from that uh, top slab layer, or half slab layer rather. Next, come down at an angle here from that uh, wool block right there, we have one and two blots of wool going down, with a half slab forwards from this. Full block of wool underneath that half slab, and a half slab going forwards again. Another full block underneath right there. Then come down at an angle right there, and we have one and two blocks going down, with a wool half slab forwards from that second block going down right there. Block underneath that uh, half slab right there, with a half slab forwards from it again. Block underneath, and a second block forwards from it, just like this. That should line up with the fuselage right there. If you need a second uh, look at that uh, line right there, there you are. But uh, yeah, now that we have that, forwards from this second block right there of the two that we just placed, we have a wool stair facing forwards and a wool half slab, just like that. So now that we have that kind of outline in place for the vertical stabilizer, this will make our lives much easier. 
So what we're going to be doing is just filling all of this in with our wool right here. So everywhere where you have an empty block inside of this outline that we've made for ourselves, just fill that in with your wool. Just like that. And that is everything for the vertical stabilizer. So now that we have the vertical stabilizer in, the next thing we're going to be putting in here is our horizontal stabilizers. So just come down to our stabilizer trim right here, where we have these two wool stairs uh, out to the side right here. On this second stair up right here, where we have this kind of nook sticking out to the side in between these two divots, place a smooth stone slap out to the side right there from that uh, wool stair right there. Let's come out at an angle. We have one and two stone slabs out to the side right here. Let's come out at an angle again and up a half slab layer this time. Nope, oh, <laughs> uh, like this. So out at an angle and up a half slab layer, we have one and two stone slabs sticking out to the side. Out at an angle and up a layer again, like this, just a single slab this time, and another slab out at an angle right here. Let's come up a layer from it, and we have a stone top slab right here, just like this. Then come out a layer right here, or out at an angle rather, we have a single quartz slab right there, just like this. Make this a row of two going back, right here. Then bring this one and two more towards the center of the aircraft right here, so it's a row of three going across in a little L shape right here. Let's come down a layer and in towards the front. We have one, two, and three quartz top slabs right there, or half slabs rather. Come down a layer again and in towards the front. We have one and two slabs right there. And then just one slab down a layer right there in line with it, just like this. If that was a bit confusing, here's a second look at you if you need to cross-reference or anything. So now that we have this outline in place right here, what we're going to be doing is just filling in all of our layering outlines. So we have three of these in total that we need to worry about. For this first layer up right here, where we have this uh, stone slab right there sticking up, we're just going to place, be placing a quartz slab right there out at an angle from it. Same thing right here, up a layer right here, and we have a quartz slab right there to fill in that line. And right here we're just going to be placing a single quartz slab in that nook right there, where we have that kind of corner shape. So that's all of our layering outlines for the horizontal stabilizers. So all that you're going to be doing now is just filling in the outlines. So where we have this uh, single layer right here, everything that's inside of the layering outline for the next layer up is going to get filled in with your quartz slabs, just like this. Same thing goes here, so everything in this outline that's below the outline for the next layer is going to get filled in like so. And same thing all the way across to right there. And that is your horizontal stabilizer done. So we'll just be doing the same thing on the other side now. Let's move this down slab out to the side. One and two out at an angle right there. Up a layer, one and two out at an angle right there. Up a layer again, and out at an angle, just one slab this time, with a second back at an angle right there. Next we have a top slab right there, in line with it, out to the side, with a quartz slab out at an angle going back. Make this a row of two going back, then bring this one and two more towards the center. Down and towards the front this time, one, two, and three slabs right there. One and two towards the center, and then just one uh, half slab right down in line with it. A quartz slab right there, out at an angle from that stone slab right there for the first layering outline. For the second, same thing, out at an angle, and then just a quartz slab right there in for that last layering outline, and fill in all of this, just like that. And with that, you have your horizontal stabilizers done. Alright, so next thing we're going to be doing here is putting in the wings of the A220. So we'll be following a similar pattern that we did to the horizontal stabilizers here. We'll be first building out the leading edge outline of the wing bringing it back towards the center with the trailing edge outline, and filling it all of in with our layering outlines. So we'll be starting right here at the wing butt, where we have this wool stair facing forwards in the second layer up right there. Count four blocks back from it with this wool layer. One, two, three, and on the fourth block right there, we have an upside down quartz stair facing forwards just like this, with a quartz top slab forwards from it just like this. Now before we continue with the leading edge outline, we're first going to outline the wing root for ourselves here to make everything easier. So, back from this, or on top of, rather, this upside down stair right here, we have one, two, and three quartz half slabs going back. Come down a layer here, we have two quartz top slabs right there. Down a layer again, two quartz half slabs right there. Down a layer again, a quartz top slab, just a single one right there. 
Now back from this here, we have a birch trapdoor from that uh, top slab right there, or again an iron trapdoor in default. Now as we've made our way back towards the front there for the layering outline, we're just going to be skipping this uh, singular quartz top slab right there. So from these two quartz half slabs right there, we're going to be bringing this four more towards the front. One, two, three, and four, just like this. So that'll block off those two blocks right there and then leave us with two half slabs going forwards from that. That should connect up right there with that upside down quartz stair. So this will give us the outline for the root of the wing right here. Next we can start bringing the leading edge forward. So for this we'll be using our smooth stone slabs again. This is for the slat detailing on the leading edge of the wing. So going out now from this upside down quartz stair right there, we have one and two uh, smooth stone slabs right there. Let's come out at, a, at an angle right here. We have a single smooth stone slab right there with a second on top of it right there. Now only from the second up we have a second going out to the side right here, just like this. Next to start putting in the engine pylon right here, what we're going to be doing is switching over to our quartz for a second, and we have a quartz half slab out to the side right here. Now what we're going to be doing is putting in the rest of this along with all of our flap track fairing detailing and everything else after we finish the wing itself. So what we're going to be doing is grabbing a magenta concrete, or any old temporary block. I like to use magenta concrete because it is ugly and sticks out like a sore thumb. So uh, underneath this quartz slab right here we have a block right there, and just a second going forwards, and that'll remind us where we need to return later to put in the rest of the engine pylon. Anyways, now that we have that, going back from this uh, quartz slab right there, we're going to be placing one and two full blocks of your quartz back like this. Up to the side of that second block right there, we have one and two smooth stone top slabs this time. Out at an angle right there, just a, if I can place that right, just a singular smooth stone slab right there. Come up a layer and we have a single uh, smooth stone slab in line with it, up a layer like this. Come out at an angle right here, we have one and two uh, half slabs right there. Out at an angle right there, a single uh, slab. Out at an angle, a second slab just like this. Next, in line with the slab, up at a, up an angle, up an angle, ah, I can't speak today. Up a layer like this, in line with this, just like that. Yeah, I can't speak today, sorry. So we've got this thing going on right here. Next, come out at an angle from the slab right here, we have one and two out to the side. That's just a singular slab out to the side right there. And repeat the process a second time, so two out at a 45 degree angle like this. Come up a layer from it, just like this, in line with it, not going back at an angle. We just have a singular slab right there, and a second singular slab going back at an angle from it like this. So we've now reached the tip of the wing. What we're going to be doing next before we continue moving back is grabbing our brick slabs, and we have a brick slab out to the side right there. This is for the red nav light on the left wing of the aircraft. So now that we've hit the end of the wing, we're just going to be coming back with two quartz uh, half slabs right there. Now we're going to be switching sides, so coming in towards the center this time, back from that second quartz slab right there, we just have a second quartz slab, so giving us an L pattern like this. Let's come forwards at an angle, we have a single uh, quartz slab right there. Come down a layer, we have one and two quartz top slabs. Come forwards at an angle, a singular quartz slab right there. Down at an angle, a singular quartz half slab, like this. Come forwards at an angle, we have one and two, or three rather, just like this, going towards the center. Now out to the, or back from the third block right here that we just placed, we're again going to be grabbing our magenta concrete, and placing a temporary block back from that third slab right there. Again, this is for a flap track fairing, and we'll be getting to that later. So, come forwards at an angle now from that quartz slab, we have a singular quartz slab right there. Come down a layer right here, we have a quartz top slab. Forwards from it here, we have one and two quartz top slabs going towards the center. Back from the second slab, we're going to be placing one and two of our temporary blocks going back, just like this. That's again for a flap track fairing. Come down a layer here, we have a single quartz half slab right there, in line with that uh, previous layer of top slabs. Come towards the front, we have one and two going towards the center there, and at an angle. Then come down a layer right here, we have a single uh, quartz top slab this time, make this a row of two going towards the center. And going back from that first one right here, not the second, but the first top slab, we have one and two of our temporary blocks going back, like so. 
Now to come down a layer right here, we just have one and two quartz half slabs going towards the center. That should line up with that single quartz top slab right there. Just like this. So, with all of that, apart from this single block that is somehow missing, I probably broke it or something, but uh, yeah, just make sure that's a stone slab right there. I don't know when I broke it, but apparently I did. So, now that we have that all in place, that is our wing outline complete. So the next thing we're going to be doing is working on the layering outlines for the top side. Alright, so we're going to be making this as simple as possible. <laughs> Just, uh, we'll be starting right here at the root of the wing and kind of working our way up as we go. So we have this first layer already right here. It's as simple as it can be. <laughs> Two uh, quartz slabs at an angle like this, so we don't even have to worry about that. There's nothing more we have to add. So for our next layer up right here, we have these two quartz slabs. Come from this here, we have one and two quartz slabs diagonally from it, like this. Come up to our next layer here, we have one, two, three, and four quartz slabs going diagonally from it, forwards like this. That'll connect up right there with the three quartz half slabs forwards. Now come up to your next layer right here. From this here, we have three top slabs diagonally, one and two and three, like this. Next come forwards at an angle right here, and we have one and two quartz top slabs going forwards, like this. That should line up right there with that uh, second full block back. That'll finish off that uh, kind of rounded layer outline, just like this. Now come up to your next layer right here. From this slab, we have one and two slabs diagonally at an angle right here. Then come in at an angle from this, we have one and two slabs going forwards, just like that. Again, that'll connect up with the leading edge right there and round off that layer. For our next layer up right here, we have one, two, uh, one, two and three top slabs uh, going diagonally from it like this. That'll again connect up with the leading edge right there. And for this last layer right here, where we have this single quartz slab, just come out at an angle from it and we have a quartz slab right there. So that'll do it for our layering outlines. Here's a second look in case you need to double check or cross reference. But what we're going to be doing now is just the same thing that we did on the horizontal stabilizers. So wherever we have a layer right here that is encased with a layering outline and uh, within the layering outline of the next layer up, we're just going to be filling in that with our port slabs. So just like this, again, not uh, continuing past the layering outlines that we have in place. Uh, also worth mentioning that here where we kind of don't have an outline, just connect that across right there. Uh, consider those two slabs right there a boundary. So you have uh, kind of four across the front like this. Anyways, just continue filling all of this in, like so. Just working your way up, all the way across. Just like this. And your two empty spaces right there. And that'll finish off the layering for the top face of the wing. So now that we have the top layering kind of complete, uh, obviously the bottom isn't looking too hot at the minute. So let's give it some actual definition. We'll be again doing the same thing with our layering outlines. So starting right here at the very bottom. Again, that single quartz top slab right there is an outlier. We won't be paying attention to it for the layering. Coming right here to where we have this upside down quartz there and this quartz half slab after it. Out to the side of the second one right here, we have three slabs going back. One, two, and three right there. That's come out at an angle right here. We have one and two going back. And that'll connect up right there with the third for your next layer up right here, where we have this uh, stone slab right there, back from it here, we have three quartz slabs, one, two, and three. Add an angle right here, one and two going back, that'll connect up with the third right there. That's this bit's kind of a little bit stranger because we have the two quartz full blocks already, but from this uh, second right here, we'll just be coming out at an angle from this, and we have three blocks going back, one, two, and three. And out to the side right here, from that third, or how to an angle rather, just a single quartz slab right there. So you have this three, three, two pattern going for that layer right there. Come up to your next layer right here, where we have this uh, stone slab. Come out at an angle from it here, we have one and two quartz slabs going diagonally from it. Then come out right here, we have one and two going back from it, out at an angle like this. And that'll connect up with that quartz slab right there. For the next layer up, where we have this uh, stone slab right here, Come out at an angle from it, we have one and two slabs going back. That'll connect up with the third. Out to the side of the third, we have a second, just like that, to fill in that uh, line. So that, again, that's a one, two, two pattern for that layer. 
And for the very last layer, we're just going to be dropping a single quartz slab in between that quartz slab right there and the stone um, slab. And that will finish off the layering outlines for the underside. So just rinse and repeat the same process. Everywhere where you have a layering outline like this, just fill it in with your quartz slabs. Just like this. Staying within the boundaries of the outline for that layer, don't continue on like this or anything. Just uh, build it all the way across. And there you go. So that is the finished layering for the wing. So now that we have the wing itself finished, what we're going to be doing is next putting in all the details on the underside, namely the engine pylon and flap track fairings. So for the engine pylon right here, where we've got these two temporary blocks that we set out so nicely for ourselves, just knock those out in place of the second block back right here. We'll be placing a quartz top slab right there, then four blocks going back, one, two, three, and four, full blocks that is with your quartz. Back from this fourth right here, we'll be grabbing a dead brain coral fan. In the air team pack, this is a vertical wool slab model, like so. So you'll just have a uh, slab, or vertical slab right there going back from that fourth block. Underneath this fourth block now, grab a dark oak trapdoor and place that right there underneath the fourth block. In the air team pack, the dark oak trapdoor is a stone brick texture like this. This is for the darkened portion at the very base of the engine pylon right here, so that's what that's replicating. Now as for the vertical slab model, uh, <laughs> again, just use an iron trapdoor in default if you want. So as for the vertical slab model right here, uh, if you don't have access to that in default, you can probably just use an upside down quartz stair right here instead. The reason we're using a just a vertical slab right here though is because the engine pylon of the H220 has this very steep upwards angle as it comes back. So an upside down stair can kind of get that across, but it is a bit more gentle than just a single uh, vertical slab. So that is why we're using it there. So to finish off the engine pylons now, we'll just be very simply dropping a quartz half slab forwards from that uh, quartz half slab on top of the top slab right there. Yeah, basically making this kind of angled pattern. So with that, that is the engine pylon complete. Next we'll be moving on to the flap track fairings. So for the flap track fairings of the A220, we'll just be doing kind of the same thing that we did with the engine pylon here. Come to this outermost uh, temporary block that we set up for ourselves. Underneath it here, starting under it, uh, we've got three quartz top slabs going forwards. One, two, and three. And we'll knock out that uh, uh, temporary block right there. Next from this uh, second one right here, this second set that we've set out for ourselves, Knock out this forwardmost one right there. In its place, we have a quartz half slab right there with a second quartz half slab forwards from it and an upside down quartz stair facing forwards just like this. And knock out that second temporary block right there. Next for this uh, third and final flap truck fairing right here. Just do the same thing before. Knock out that forwardmost um, uh, temporary block right there. Pl replace it with a quartz half slab right here. One and two more going forwards then knock out this final uh, quartz slab right there and replace it with a quartz upside down stair facing forwards like so and knock out that final temporary block. So that is all of our flap track fairings in place now. Now as you noticed we unfortunately don't have room for the outlining of the flaps in this scale so it's just the flap track fairings so that's what we've got going here. So with that that is the wing itself complete. Now before we move on to the engines, we're next going to be putting in the winglets. Alright, so to put in the winglets, we'll be coming to the very tip of the wing right here, where we have this nav light on the second block back where our quartz slabs start. Grab your wool stairs, we have a wool stair facing forwards out to the side from that, with a wool stair facing towards the center of the aircraft to corner that off, like so. Next we're going to be dropping a vertical slab behind it with our dead brain coral fan, just as we did with the engine pylon. So for this, drop a temporary block back from it with a vertical slab behind it. Grab that with your replace tool and paste over. Again, that's slash REPL0 to switch that over to the replace tool if you need, if you've uh, changed from when we put in the tripwire hooks or anything. Anyways, now that we have that, um, well, let's be placing a wool stair facing forwards out to the side from that second block back right there with a full block of your wool behind it like this. Come out at an angle from that wool right there with a wool stair facing forwards and a vertical slab behind it like so. So that vertical slab will keep the uh, end nicely tapered off and flattened as the real A220 is. It's a very kind of flat wing design or winglet design for it. So if you don't have uh, access to the air team pack, if you're on console or whatever, uh, you can try using upside down stairs in its place. 
but it'll look r really weird and kind of oddly thick. So it might be a better idea to instead use uh, trapdoors, maybe, and then an upside down stair right there. But again, that's a bit of a thin alternative, so um, yeah, it's kind of up to you, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, this is the best way to get that across with your um, uh, vertical slab models here. Again, that's why we use it in the AR team pack. So with that, that is your winglet done. So with that, the A220 wing is complete. The next thing we're going to be doing is just mirroring this on over to the other side of the aircraft. I'm not going to be building this on camera, but all that you're going to be doing is just uh, doing everything here in reverse fashion. So, uh, if you need, you can find a timestamp back to where we initially started this wing uh, in the video description down below. But uh, yeah, just build the wing on the right side of the aircraft now, and I'll catch you when that is done. So, this is what your finished wing should look like mirrored over to the other side of the aircraft. If you need a second look at anything, uh, have a look at the screen now. Anyways, once we have that, there's just uh, one less thing to fix. For the nav light, as I mentioned, on the left side of the aircraft, the nav light is red. But on the right side here, the nav light is, of course, green. So what we'll be doing is knocking out that brick slab right there and replacing it with a prismarine brick slab light. So this will give it the green color it needs for the green nav light. So with that, that is everything for the wings. Next, we'll be moving on to our engines. All right, so for our two Pratt & Whitney PW1500G engines, what we're going to be doing is coming down to the engine pylon here. Now where we have this uh, half slab here, the second of the two half slabs, underneath it we're going to be placing a block of wool right there, and a second going forwards like this. This is for the start of the engine cowling on the top. Now before we continue bringing the engine cowling around, what we're going to be doing is actually starting with the engine itself. So grab your black wool underneath this... Uh, that second, the forwards most wool right there. We'll be placing a black wool right there with a stone button on its face for the spinner. So this is for the intake fan of the PW1500G. Going back from this here, we have a second black wool now. Grab your block of coal. We have two of these going back now. Then for the exhaust cone and all that at the end of the engine here, we'll be placing a block of cobblestone right there with a cobblestone wall there for the exhaust nozzle and an iron trapdoor underneath that cobblestone block, just like that. So that'll kind of give us the core of the engine that we need. So we can cycle all these blocks away now, grab our wool materials once more, now that we have the engine done. So uh, we'll be grabbing also the stone bricks for this. So the first thing we're going to be doing here, let's actually start with the inlet cowling. So, forwards from that block of wool right there, we have an upside down stone brick stair right there. Out to either side, we have a stone brick stair facing to the side, like this, with a stone brick full block underneath. Upside down stone brick stair facing out to the side, and an upside down stone brick stair, or normal stone brick stair rather, facing forwards just like this. That'll give us this kind of curved um, look for the front of the engine. So, now that we have the inlet cowling done, we can start bringing the rest of the cowling back. So, from this solid block of stone bricks right there, we have four blocks of wool going back. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. That'll be on both sides like this. Now, for the top of the engine right here, on the top side, we're going to be placing a wool stair facing forwards. That'll corner off like so. Block behind it like this. Stair facing out to the side, and a slab right there. Same thing over here. Stair facing forwards to corner off. Wool right there. Stair out to the side, and slab. Now, on the underside here, Actually, let's first bring the center row back. So right here we have one and two full wool blocks going back. Stair facing forwards and a wool slab right there, like so. So it'll give you this kind of uh, curved pattern. Now for the underside here, we again have a wool stair facing forwards to corner off right there, and a block of wool behind. Now instead of curving this off with an upside down stump or, or an upside down wool stair there on a top slab, we're going to be curving this off with an upside down stair facing backwards and an upside down stair facing out to the side, just like this to give the engine its kind of oblong shape. So, same thing on the other side here. Uh, stair facing forwards, block behind, upside down stair facing backwards, and an upside down stair facing up to the side. And once you have that, that is the Pratt & Whitney PW1500G engine done. So we'll just be building this on the other side here. Same thing as we did. So underneath the second uh, block back, or block forwards rather, that half slab right there, one and two wool blocks. Next with your black wool, block underneath for the intake fan, stone button on the front for the spinner, 
second black wall back right there, and then I threw away the block of coal, so I'll have to get that out. One and two blocks of coal going back from that, like so. Uh, here we go. Cobblestone full block back from that, with a cobblestone wall back right there for the exhaust nozzle. And then an iron trap door on the bottom of that cobblestone block right there. Perfect. That'll give us that out of the way. So now going forwards from that wall block right there. Upside down stonebrick stair facing forwards. Stonebrick stair out to the sides. Stonebrick full block right there. Upside down stonebrick stair out to the sides. And a stonebrick stair right there facing forwards. Just like that. Then to bring this off, just four blocks going back right there. Four blocks going back. Uh, like this. On the underside here, one and two blocks. Stair and slab. Now to curve off the top right here, we have our stone brick stairs facing, wall stairs rather, I'm looking at the wrong part here, wall stairs facing forwards to corner off like this, wall block going back from this here, stair out to the side and slab, stair out to this side and slab right there. And on the other side we have the wall stair facing forwards, block back, upside down stair facing backwards, and upside down stair out to the side, just like so. Forwards, block, back, and side. Just like that. And that is everything for the engines. So that is the exterior of the in-flight aircraft done. Now before we move on to the landing gear to finish off the landed A220, we're next going to be putting in the interior. Alright, so let's get going on the interior. Just hop on inside the aircraft right here. Now before we put in the floor to get started on the actual seating portion of the interior and all that, we're first going to be putting in the cargo holds. So we'll be starting right up here with the forward cargo hold. Where we have the forward cargo door right here, these uh, four quartz blocks. On this bottom layer right here, this uh, one that's kind of sticking out, we'll be counting four wool blocks going forwards from it. One, two, three, and four. And out to the side of this fourth block right here, we'll be placing a pillar quartz aligned horizontally just like this. This is for the very front of the cargo hold. So again, that's on the fourth block right there. Now counting back from this last uh, quartz block right here, we have one, two, three, four, and on the fifth block right here, a pillar quartz block, like so. Let's grab your rails back from this uh, the forward uh, bulkhead of the cargo hold. We have a rail right there with a pressure plate behind it. And this pattern is just going to repeat all the way back until we hit the rear, just like so. So that is the forward cargo holds in place. Next we'll be moving to the rear of the aircraft right here, where we have the aft cargo door right here. Counting two blocks back, so one and on the second block, we again have our quartz pillar right there, just basically one block forwards from that uh, center row of wool. Now as for the forward edge of the cargo hold right here, you see where we have these uh, four blocks going forwards here with our wool. So after these four blocks right here, we're actually going to be grabbing uh, quartz stairs right here. And we have one, two, and three quartz stairs facing towards the center right there to fill in this extra uh, space right here. So again, that's four blocks back from the uh, aft cargo door right there, and then three more blocks going forwards from it right there, this time with your quartz stairs. Then just bring this three across with your uh, pillar quartz right there to cap that off. That's starting from the front right here, might as well. We again have our rail pressure plate and just bring this whole pattern back, alternating like so, until you hit the very rear. So with that, that is both of your cargo holds done. Next thing we're going to be doing is grabbing gray wool and black wool, and we're going to be filling in the floor of the aircraft here. So, come up to the forward doors right here, where you have this upside down uh, port stair here on the bottom block of these forward doors. Place one, two, and three blocks of wool, or black wool that is, across the center right there. Uh, in line with that wool underneath, basically just like this. Now, going forwards from this here, or backwards rather, sorry, from the center block right here, we're just going to be taking this uh, black wool all the way back here in line with the aft doors, just like this, all the way to the back right here. And uh, we'll stop right here, we'll worry about this extra space later. So, along the sides right here, all the space is just going to get filled in with the grey wool for the seating. Again, the uh, black wool down the center is for the aisle markings, connecting with the doors of the aircraft. And just fill all this space in with your grey wool on the other side. Like so. 
Now we'll first start up at the front here with the forward galleys before we move on to the flight deck. So, uh, I think I can throw these away for now, yeah. The first thing we'll be putting in here is the closet at the uh, front of the aircraft. So first, uh, grab an iron trapdoor and a birch door here. On this uh, gray wolf right here, the kind of the first one, we'll be placing a birch door facing forwards right there. With two iron trapdoors opened up against the side just like that to close it off. Now for the forward bulkhead going back from that with your quartz, we have an upside down quartz stair facing backwards on the bottom block right there with a quartz full block on top. On the right side now for the forward galley, grab a smooth stone block right here. Drop a smooth stone on top of that first block with a dark oak trapdoor on top like so. And for the forward bulkhead over here, quartz full block and a quartz stair facing sideways just like this. And then to connect this off with the forward doors here, what we're going to be doing is actually knocking out these blocks of wool above the doors right here, and replacing these with upside down wool stairs facing towards the center of the aircraft to fill in the uh, spaciousness of the uh, roundness of the fuselage. I don't know how else to explain that, but yeah. So this bit that's sticking down here is for the overhead bins in the uh, aircraft, and so this will round it off nicely against that. Next thing we'll be doing here is grabbing our birch door again, and on the second block right, or center block, not second, rather, of this uh, black wolf rover right here, we'll be placing a birch door right there, just like this. This is for the cabin door for the uh, entrance to the flight deck. Now against these blocks right here, we'll be placing uh, iron trap doors opened up, just like this, to kind of fill in that uh, wall right there, all the way across because unfortunately the space is used up by the flight deck itself, so we can't use uh, smooth stone blocks to close that off. So yeah, iron trap door is closed against that to fill in that uh, forward wall. Anyways, now that we have that all kind of set out and uh, out of the way, we'll next be putting in the flight deck. So first thing you're going to do is grab a uh, andesite, I believe, right here. Now out to the side right here, we have an andesite on these outermost blocks with an andesite stair in the center between the two, just like this. Now out to either side here, forwards from these blocks of andesite, we have a stone slab. So not the smooth stone slab that you have in 1.14, but the normal um, regular stone slab like this for kind of a darker color. In, in 1.13 below, just use the uh, regular stone slab, don't worry about it, but uh, yeah, that is a nice distinction to make in 1.14 and above. Anyways, now that we have that, uh, that's, so that's, that'll be the um, kind of the floor area of the, the flight deck. So, uh, let's put in the cockpit seats next. So, normally for our seat designs, what we have is an, let's see, uh, a stair like this with a slab on top for the headrest. Now, for the seats here, the, it's, the flight deck is actually sunk down a half slab layer, uh, just due to how it works in real life. So for this, instead of having this design, we're actually going to be erasing this layer. So we'll have a full block and an upside down stair on top, just like this. That'll give us the same design, but uh, uh, lowered a half slab layer in line with the rest of the flight deck here. So we have our full block right there already. Then just drop an andesite upside down stair facing forwards, just like this. And that will finish off the pilot and co-pilot seats. Now before we continue, this is bugging me a little bit. So we have these wool blocks right here across the top. What we're going to be doing is replacing these with wool top slabs to give us some more uh, spacious room here for the interior of the flight deck. So just replace these five um, wool uh, blocks right here with your wool top slabs. I'm going to have to get rid of that temporary slab I placed right there. So, that will give us this nice, uh, spacious interior here. So now that we have that dealt with, what we're going to be doing next is grabbing a stone bird stair. And now forwards from this uh, andesite stair right here, we're going to have a stone, stair, stone bird stair facing backwards just like this, with a stone bird full block forwards from it, like so. This is for the center pedestal with the throttle quadrant and all of that right here. Now for the foot pedals, right here for the rudder pedals, for the pilot and co-pilot, we'll be knocking out this wool block right here and replacing it with a wool stair facing backwards, just like this. That'll give us the room we need for the foot pedals underneath the uh, seats. 
Next, to finish off the instrument panel right here, what we're going to be doing is, uh, I can throw away the andesite materials for now, don't need them anymore. Uh, let's grab our stone brick stairs, and what we're going to be doing is, on top of this wool stair right there for the foot pedals, we'll be dropping a stone brick stair facing up to the side, just like this, with a uh, stone brick top slab in between, and again, another stone brick stair up to the side, just like this. So that'll give you the kind of panel right here for the instrument panels, uh, glare shield, MCP, all of that. Now to finish off the center display right here, we only really have room for the one, but uh, for this we'll grab the jungle slabs for a nice uh, bright, um, bright blue texture, like this, right there in the center to fill in that space. Now if you are in uh, default, that'll look a little bit strange, so maybe just use a like a light blue concrete in its place or something like that. Uh, it will show over the top right here, but uh, yeah, otherwise it should be good. So yeah, now that we have that, uh, let's grab levers. Now on this wool block right here, off to the left of the uh, pilot seats right here, in this gap, we're going to be placing a lever off to the side from that wool block. This is for the side stick controls, so for uh, Airbus and uh, this newer Bombardier aircraft, it actually uses a uh, side stick for control, so it's a joystick off to the outside of the uh, pilot seat right here, instead of a yoke control for the aircraft. So uh, we'll just be doing the same thing on both sides like this. Next, to finish off the overhead panels, we'll just be grabbing uh, wool slabs, there we are, and dark oak trapdoors. So, right here, a wool top slab out to either side right there to kind of close that off, and a wool top slab right there to uh, fill in the space. Now for the overhead panel right here, we have a dark oak trapdoor right there from that uh, first top slab back, then an iron trapdoor right there to finish off the aft. That'll finish off the overhead panel, and our flight deck is done. So we'll next be moving on up to the front here, and next after this we have the first class seating. So it's worth mentioning that for the seating here in the cabin of our A220, uh, this would of course vary by airline in both uh, color and configuration with uh, whether there's a first class section or not, and uh, what color the seats are and all of that. But this is kind of our best approximation, an average of what you would expect to see on your usual A220. So for default interior, this is what we're doing here. If you are building a specific delivery or something for this aircraft, you'll of course be using a custom interior or whatever. But uh, yeah, so for the first class seating here that we'll be starting with, what we're going to be doing here is using cobblestone stairs for the seat color, a gray like this, with a wool slab here, I already have it in my inventory, wool slab on top for a white headrest. And this is our default interior that we're going to be using for the A220. So, we're going to be having three of these seats going back in total. One, two, and three, like this. Same thing on both sides. And wool slabs on top for the headrests. This is kind of our very small business section. So, after this, we'll be putting in the class dividers. So, grab a an iron trapdoor here and a gray banner. On the left side here, we're just going to be placing two iron trapdoors like this, opened up into each other. And then just two more in this space right here, closed up against those to make this kind of double thick wall with your iron trapdoors. Same thing right here, skip a block, two iron trapdoors right there, opened up into each other, and two more right there to close that off. Now on the right side of the aircraft right here, what we're going to be doing is grabbing our grey banners, and on the second block up of this forward run, kind of just right here, we'll be placing a grey banner right there to close that off. This will be for the uh, class divider curtain kind of thing right here. Anyways, now that we have that, we can continue with the seating. So we'll just be using the same uh, seat pattern right here, cobblestone stair, wool half slab right here for the headrest for the economy class seating. So uh, this pattern will go back 12 seats here for the economy class. So we have one, two, oh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, like this. Same thing on the other side here. One, two, three, four. <laughs> 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, just like this. Again, with your wool half slabs on top of each seat. Going all the way across, if I can place these blocks correctly. Just like this. There we go. So that's everything for the economy class seating. There's nothing else to worry about here. 
So what we're going to be doing next is putting in the aft galleys here to finish off the interior. So first let's, uh, we can throw away that gray banner. Let's first grab our quartz behind this seat right here. What we're going to be doing is putting in the aft bulkheads. So we'll place a quartz full block here on the left with a quartz stair right there facing towards the center. And on the right side, just two quartz full blocks right there, like so. Now, back from this uh, bulkhead here on the left, we're going to be putting in the uh, one of the galleys. So for this, we have a smooth stone block right here with a dark oak trapdoor on top. Same design as we did up at the front there for the forward galley. Now on the right side here, we have the lavatory to put in. So behind these two quartz full blocks right here, we'll be placing a birch door right there, facing towards the center with two iron trapdoors opened up against the back, just like this. That'll close that off nicely for the lavatory. Next, let's put in the rest of the aft galleys here to finish this off. So for this, we'll just be grabbing our smooth stone, and basically one block back from the aft doors right here, we've got a smooth stone block right there, and a dark oak trapdoor on top right here. That'll be the uh, galley design, same as we did before. Now before we actually bring this all the way across, what we're going to be doing is closing off the gap at the back here. So for this we'll be taking wool and placing a block of wool back from that, like this, to connect up right there. And same thing on the other side here. Now in the gap between, we have a cobblestone stair facing forwards right here, and a cobblestone upside down stair on top of it like this. Out to the sides here, we're going to have a nether brick upside down stair, just like this, facing forward as well and that'll kind of close off this uh, gap at the back right here. So now we can just bring the smooth stone all the way across and dark oak trapdoors on top to finish off the aft galleys. Next we'll kind of be doing the same thing as we did up there at the front with the upside down stairs and the ceiling. So grab your wool stairs. From the aft door right here, we're gonna be knocking out this full block above it right there and replacing that with an upside down stair facing towards the center. Then one more going forwards from it just like this. Same thing on the other side here, so upside down right there, in line with the door, and then one more going forwards from it. Now right here, uh, where we have these, this kind of row of three going across where the aft galley is right here, we'll knock out the center one right there and replace it with an upside down stair facing forwards, just like this. This will kind of give you the open curvature of the fuselage itself, again, as these full blocks here on the side are for the overhead cargo bins. So that'll open up everything nicely here. Now the very last thing we'll be doing here is just uh, covering all of this up here with the black carpet to uh, close off these wool gaps right here on the floor. So uh, what we're going to be doing is actually something a little bit different. So you'll notice these are wool full blocks in the ground right here. These are the floor rather. These have to be wool because they're covering up this um, uh, empty gap right here in the side of the aircraft. So we can't just simply replace these with black wool because it'll show through the side of the aircraft. But, if you remember with the cockpit windows up at the front there, we do have the stripped oak log here that we can capitalize on. So, this will have a wool slab texture on the bottom half, and a black wool texture on the top face, which is perfect for covering up the uh, carpet here in the floor, while also preserving that uh, single slab of wool at the base to cover up the sides of the aircraft. So this is the perfect solution for that. Now if you are in the default and uh, can't use the stripped oak log for that, uh, you can just leave it with wool here and uh, just use black carpet on the last two blocks right here and maybe this one as well. But unfortunately we can't use that on the right side here because it, there is that iron trapdoor in the way. So this is why we're using the stripped oak log in the first place there to give it a consistent uh, gradient all the way through for the floor, while also then keeping everything sunken in nicely so we don't have these black carpets kind of sticking up randomly like this. So that will give it the nice consistent black carpeting for the uh, exits here at the rear. Anyways, now that we have that all done, that's the aft galleys here complete, and the interior of the A220 is done. So with that, that is the exterior of the in-flight A220 complete. If you are building this in the air with the landing gear retracted, you are done with this tutorial, and you can skip right on ahead to the end of the video. If you are building this on the ground though, as I am here, next up we will be building the landing gear. Alright, so for the landing gear of the A220, we'll be starting right up here with the nose gear. First thing we're going to have here is where we have these two quartz top slabs here in the fuselage for the gear doors. We'll be knocking both of those out right here. 
Now to close off the uh, gear wheel here on the inside, on top of that very first wool top slab right there going back, we'll have a stone brick full block there to close off that gap. Next, grab your wool top slabs. We have a wool top slab going back right there, so we have a row of three. Next, um, on this gap right here in the rear portion of it, we'll have a cobblestone full block right there to close this off. Now in this empty space right here, we're going to have two cobblestone walls right there to fill that up. Now going down from this cobblestone wall right here, this last one, we have two more cobblestone walls just like this, and that will um, uh, bring down the gear strut. So below this cobblestone wall right here, we'll have a black wool block right there for the nose gear with a stone button out to the sides to fill in the uh, rim of the wheel. Now to finish off the uh, strut here, We'll grab a dark oak trapdoor, and back from this uh, bottommost cobblestone wall right there, we'll put a dark oak trapdoor closed against the wall. This is for the uh, shock absorber assembly at the base of the shock strut. So to finish off the nose gear here, what we're going to be doing is putting in the gear doors out to the side. So grab a temporary block, and out to the side of these, uh, this topmost cobblestone wall right there, we have a temporary block there, with one more going forwards, just like this on both sides. Now in its place right here, what we're going to be doing is placing in these dead brain coral fans. Again, that's the uh, wool vertical slab model. So, select this with your replace tool. Now before you paste this in, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you're in slash slash fast mode. I'm already in slash slash fast, so uh, that'll have no effect for me. But you want to make sure that you have that enabled. Otherwise, it's going to give it a block update as soon as it's pasted in, and it's going to break and fall off. Slash off fast allows it to paste in without giving it a block update, so it can stay on uh, perfectly without breaking or anything. So, just uh, select that vertical slab right there, and paste it over the two temporary blocks. Same thing here on the right side, just like this, and paste it over. So, that'll give you the gear doors opened up out to the side. Now, if you are in default and don't have the vertical slab model, what you can use is a uh, court stair, uh, upside down out to the side, just like this, in the place of these... Um, vertical slabs right here, but uh, yeah, this is the solution we're using here in the Aero Team pack. It's a much more realistic alternative to the shaping of the gear door in real life. So once you have that, that is the nose gear complete. Now for the main landed gear, what we're going to be doing is just coming to the uh, underbelly here in the wing box, where we have the exposed uh, landed gear on the underside right here, the black wool with the stone button on its face. What we're going to be doing is knocking this out. Now to the outside right here, this quartz upside down stair here for the gear door, we'll be knocking that out as well. Now in its place right here, uh, come a block out right here, so underneath the wing now, and we have a cobblestone upside down stair facing towards the center of the aircraft. This will be the start of our strut for the main landing gear here, so just like this, with a uh, cobblestone wall going down from it here. Next grab a cobblestone slab, we have a cobblestone top slab underneath that uh, a cobblestone wall right there, so you should have a strut looking just like this. Out to the side of that um, cobblestone top slab now, we have a uh, black wool block right there, with a nether brick slab on top of it just like this to add a bit more size to the wheel itself. Out to the side from that uh, black wool full block now, we have a single stone button right there, and that will finish off again the uh, rim for the uh, wheel itself. So now that we have the strut in place, what we're going to be doing is carving out a little bit more here going in for where the uh, gear door closes up. So, uh, let's see, where we have this um, acacia button right there, we'll be knocking that out and the wool block in its place right there, or the wool block above it. And we'll be placing a cobblestone upside down stair facing backwards right here. Next, to preserve that detail, we'll be placing a... Um, Acacia button right back in its place right here. So, uh, acacia button right there. Stick, grab that, and paste over that um, block right there. So that'll trick that uh, acacia button into staying on the underside of that upside down stair, which of course normally wouldn't be able to happen in vanilla Minecraft. So that'll give you something looking just like this. Again, that's for a little detail that's uh, forwards from the landing gear right here. So once we have that, uh, we'll next be putting in the gear door for the um, main landing gear right here. So for this we have a, uh, let's see, out to the side of this upside down cobblestone stair right here for the strut, we'll be placing an upside down quartz stair facing towards the back right here. That'll corner off that cobblestone stair nicely like this. Now forwards from this upside down stair right here, we have a quartz stair facing forwards, just a normal stair this time, not an upside down stair, so it'll give you something looking like this. 
with a towards top slab underneath it. And to finish off the landing gear here, we have two iron trapdoors uh, going towards the center from that um, court stair and slab, just like this. And that'll give you your main landing gear. So we'll just be doing the same thing on the other side here. Again, that's knocking out the stone button right there, the black wall, and the uh, gear door right there. Upside down the cobblestone stair facing towards the center right there, cobblestone wall under it, and a cobblestone top slab underneath. Black wall block out to the side, a stone button on its face for the rim, and a netherbrick slab on top to finish off the wheel. Then for the gear door right here, upside down quartz stair facing backwards, quartz stair facing forwards, and a quartz top slab underneath. Iron trap door towards the inside from both of those right there. Then come towards the center right here where we have the uh, gear well. Knock out that acacia button and the wool block above it. Cobblestone stair right there. And then a temporary block below. Acacia button just anywhere. <laughs> Select that and yep, paste over just like this. That'll expose the extra space right here in the gear well and uh, also finish off that uh, little detail on the underside. Anyways, once we have that, the uh, landing gear themselves are complete. Now, uh, as you may have noticed, the interior space isn't too, uh, looking too hot at the moment. So, let's finish off the gear well. What we're going to be doing is, uh, let me just start from the left side here. So for this, uh, let me just grab my cobblestone right here. And let's see, we have these two upside down cobblestone stairs right there for the uh, space in the uh, gear where it opens up. Yeah, that. So, uh, we're going to be skipping this block right here. And forwards from it, on top of this uh, wool uh, block right there, we'll be placing a cobblestone full block right there. Same thing on the other side, and that will uh, close off that uh, gap going forwards. Next, instead of placing a block right there on the inside, we'll be coming one back right here, and on top of this wool block, we have a quartz full block right there. And we'll kind of be doing the same thing here on, in reverse fashion going on from the back right here. So, cobblestone full blocks right there, skipping this first block. And then a quartz full block right there, kind of in from both of those, just like this. Next, grab your cobblestone walls, and on top of each of these four exposed blocks now, we'll have a cobblestone wall right there that will close off this gap. Next, we have a uh, stone button right here. So underneath this gray wall right here, where we have the interior space, we're going to be placing a stone button right there to finish off the detailing for the deer well. Same thing on the other side right there, stone button on that exposed gray wall block. And lastly, a cobblestone wall right there joining up those two blocks of quartz, just like this. So once you have that, that's it for the main landed gear, and that is everything for the Airbus A220. So congratulations on completing the Airbus A220-300. We hope that you enjoyed building it, and we hope that you enjoy having it in your Minecraft world. Thank you so much for choosing an Aero Team design. Hundreds of hours of work from all of us here at the Aero Team go into all of our aircraft to make these designs possible. And on that note, we do ask that if you use our designs, then please do give us credit for our hard work. Feel free to build this on a server, or any kind of airport project you intend to share in any way. You're most welcome to use our designs, that's why we publish them. But if you do, do so, then you must give credit to the Aero Team for these aircraft. And if you have built this aircraft, let us know. We'd love to see how you're using our designs. So, with that all out of the way, that concludes this tutorial. Again, thank you so much for building this aircraft. If you enjoyed, you can check out our other tutorials via the playlist in the description below. If you like this, you might find something else for us that you like too. And if you do find that to be the case, then please do consider subscribing to the Air Team channel to be the first to see our new aircraft when they come out. That's just about it though. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.